5. This is section 6.1. We're going to introduce the rectangular coordinate system. It's also known as the Cartesian coordinate system, which was named after the person who came up with it, Rene Descartes, a French mathematician from a few hundred years ago. Um, so where would we use a rectangular coordinate system? Well, let's first define some things that we come across in the real world. Like maybe we have a set of data. Maybe we're comparing two different things. And if we recall from um, section 4.9, we introduced reading graphs. Well, a Cartesian coordinate system is one of the most common graphs that we use, especially in mathematics. So Let's look at this data that we have. And this has to do with average monthly mortgage payments per year or by year. If we look at this, in 1994, the average monthly mortgage payment was $578. In 1995, it was 613. In 96, 654, and so on and so forth. And if we just look at the data, maybe we can uh, come to some conclusions. We can say, OK, well, during these years, as the year increases, we see that the average cost of a mortgage is going to increase as well. So our payment increases. And we can see that pattern of increasing. Well, if we want to predict future things, maybe we can put this on a graph and look at its behavior and see what it's doing, and maybe predict what the average monthly mortgage payment is going to be in the year uh, 2020. So. <clears throat> What we can do is we can actually graph this. And we do this by first looking at the data that we have. These are paired data. In this year, we had this much. In this year, we had this much. So we could write this paired data as an ordered pair, 1994, corresponds to 578. 1995 corresponds to 600. And 13. So <clears throat> we call these ordered pairs. And if we put them on a graph, maybe this is one variable that changes each year in this case. And this is some other variable. So we're comparing two things. And we can write them as what we call ordered pairs. And ordered pairs are always one variable and the other, x and y. And this is an important concept because we have to know which variable is which, x, y. All right, so we're going to move to another board and take a look at a Cartesian coordinate plane. So let's go ahead and move over there. All right, here we have the Cartesian coordinate plane. And it's divided by two lines. Now, we think of these as number lines. We're familiar with a horizontal number line. But now we're going to introduce another number line. And this is a vertical number line. Each of these tick marks would be 1 or 2 or whatever scale we're using. And we call this one the x-axis. It applies to that x variable. We call this one the y-axis. It applies to the y variable. Now, when we put these two number lines intersecting, one horizontally, one vertically, it divides our graph into four sections. And we call these quadrants, quad meaning four. So we have these four quadrants. And this is the first quadrant, Roman numeral one. First quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. And if we're looking at data, at if this is a number line and we call this point 0, it's the origin, anything to the right of this is positive on our x-axis or positive in our number line, just like our positive integers. For this one, anything above the x-axis or going this way in y, going up, is positive. It's increasing, positive. Anything below is negative. So if we know that, anything in the first quadrant is positive. So if I have a value in the first quadrant, the x value is positive and the y value is positive. If I'm in the second quadrant, well, here we're to the left of 0. So our x is negative, but we're still above the x-axis. So we're above it. So this is positive. In the second quadrant, x values are negative and y values are positive. If we look at the third quadrant, the third quadrant, while we're 
negative in the x. We're left of the y-axis. But we're below the x-axis now, which means the y values are also negative. So we have two negative values. And then in the fourth quadrant, well, we're back on the right side of the y-axis. So x is positive over here. But we're below the x-axis, so the y values will be negative. This concept will sometimes help you when it comes time to graph uh, some data or some ordered pairs. All right, let's look at another graph here. And we're actually going to graph some ordered pairs. These are x, y values, so we have an x, y axis. And again, it divides this plane into four quadrants. So let's just work from left to right here. 0, 0. This here is where x is 0 on this horizontal number line, and y is 0 on this vertical number line. 0, 0. This is a special point, and I'm going to label this ordered pair 0, 0. This is something we call the origin, because all the values originate from here, whether we're going to the right for positive values, or to the left for negative values, or up for positive values, or down from negative values. This is our point of reference. We call it the origin. Let's plot this point here. It says negative 2, 2. So my x value is negative 2. So that means I'm going to go to the left, 1, 2 spots. And I'm going to use each of these tick, tick marks to represent one space. So negative 2 to the left. Then it says 2 in the y direction. So I'm going to go positive 2, up 1, 2. So I'm going to plot this point right here. This is the point negative 2 in the x, positive 2 in the y. Negative 2, 2 is my ordered pair. So I've labeled that point. The next value, 5, 0. Well, x is 5, so that means I'm to the right of the origin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 0 tells me I'm not going to go up or down. I'm going to stay right here, the origin of the y-axis, the 0 value. So I just moved over to the right. Now, this value here, 5, 0, I label that point. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that shortly. Let's graph three more points. Here I have 2, negative 2. So 2, negative 2, where is that going to put me? That's going to put me, let's see, 2 to the right, or positive in x, and down 2. And I'll label that 2, negative 2. That's the ordered pair for this one right here. If I'm going to graph this 1, 1, I'm going to go 1 in the x direction, positive x, so to the right, and up 1 in the y. So this is the value 1, 1. And I label that ordered pair. It's a little crowded, but that's OK. Here we have negative 1, negative 1. Well, that tells me I'm going to go left in the x, one value, and down in the y, one value. And this is the ordered pair, negative 1, negative 1. Let's do just one more. I'll write it right here. Um, let's say, zero five. 5. Uh, let's make it 0, negative 5. So what does that tell us to do? What is the ordered pair there? Well, it says 0, so I'm not going to go left or right in the x. But it, I am going to go down 5, because my y value is negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This right here is that ordered pair. 0, negative 5. 0 in the x direction, but down 5 in the y. So now that we have these ordered pairs, let's do a little assessment, a little review of what we just discussed. What quadrant are these values in? Well, if I look at this value, I see both are positive. Well, x is positive and y is positive. We're in the first quadrant. What about this point, 2, negative 2? Well, 2, negative 2, and if we recall, it was 1, 2, 3, 4. It's in a counterclockwise direction. 2, negative 2, well, that is positive in the x and negative in the y. So that brings us into this quadrant. This is the fourth quadrant. What about this value here? Negative 2, 2. It looks similar to this. 2, negative 2, negative 2, 2. Well, the x value is negative, so we're to the left of the y-axis. And the y value is positive, so we have a negative and a positive. 
We are in the second quadrant. And of course, the last one, negative 1, negative 1, that would be here where both values are negative, both values negative, is in the third quadrant. Sometimes if we just look at the ordered pairs, we can determine that. Well, x is negative, y is positive, we would be in the second quadrant. What about the points that aren't particularly in a quadrant? Because the axes divide the quadrants. If we look at the origin, the origin is not in the first, second, third, or fourth quadrant because it falls on the axes. And this, is, this point would be an intercept if we thought about it, if it was a, an equation or some data points that we were looking at. It's not in any quadrant because it's on the axes. And we generally call these intercepts. Just like this one here, 5, 0. It's not in the first quadrant, and it's not in the fourth quadrant because it falls right on the axis. This one here, 0, negative 5. It's not in the fourth quadrant. It's not in the third quadrant. It is on the axes. It's an intercept of this axis. And if we think about the number 0, well, it's neither positive or negative. When we talked about these quadrants, positive and positive, or negative and negative, we were in a different quadrant. 0 is neither positive or negative, so it's not in any of the quadrants. So this is right on the axis. All right, <clears throat> let's look at how this applies to linear equations. Linear equations are when we have two variables, like we've seen. We have uh, maybe years and monthly mortgage payment costs. Well, x and y can represent any data sets that we have of two variables. So this is a linear equation in two variables. We can work with these just like we worked before. If it asks us, is x equal to 3 and y equal to 3 a solution to this linear equation? Well, it's essentially just asking us to evaluate it. So if I evaluate it, I have an x term and two y terms. And they have to equal 9. So to evaluate it, I just plug this value in. x is 3. y is also 3. So I put it in. 3 plus 2 times 3 is 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. That's a true statement, which means it's a solution to that equation. And I can write it as an ordered pair. I always write my ordered pair as the x value and y value. And since it is a solution, x is 3, y is 3. This is a solution, and we write it as an ordered pair, the two variables, x, y. What if it asked us in this term? It says, is the ordered pair 5, 2? a solution, or is 0, 9 a solution? Well, there's actually two questions here, so let's actually work them out. For the first one, 5, 2, I'm going to put it in here. x is 5 plus 2 times y, which is 2. Here's my x. Here's my y. Does that equal 9? Well, 5 plus 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4. 5 plus 4 is 9. And that's a true statement. 9 equals 9. It doesn't get more truer than that. So if 9 is 9, it came from these ordered pairs. The answer is yes, this is a solution. What about 0, 9? Well, if x is 0, I'm going to put that in for the x value. 9, 2 times y, 9 is the y value. Does that equal 18? Well, 0, well, that's just 0. I'm going to eliminate it. 0 plus anything doesn't change it. 2 times, oh, excuse me, I'm jumping ahead. The equation was x plus 2y equals 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Does 18 equal 9? No, it does not. That is not a true statement. So is this a solution? No, it is not. All right, let's look a little bit deeper into this. What if we know one of the variables, but we don't know the other? Well, what we can do is we can evaluate it and then solve. It's just an additional step. So if I'm given an ordered pair, but I'm missing one of them, I can find it by plugging in the other, evaluate. Well, this is the y term because it's always x, y. So I'm going to plug it in. So x, I don't know what that is, plus 2 times y, I was given a y value. And now I can solve for x. I have an equation in one variable. So 2 times 9 halves, the 2's cancel. And I can subtract 9 from both sides. And if I do that, 
I get x equals 0. So if y is 9 halves, x equals 0. My missing piece, my x value, is 0. 0 9 halves would be an ordered pair on the graph. What if I'm given an x value and not the y value? I can do the same thing. If x is 1 plus 2 times y instead of x plus 2y equals to 9, I can plug this value in for x. Now I can solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides to undo this addition over here. And I get 2y equals 9 minus 1 is 8. So 2 times y equals 8. I can undo this multiplication with division. I'm going to divide both sides. 2 over 2 is 1. 1y one equals 8 divided by 2 is 4. So when x is 1, y is 4. So the ordered pair 1, 4 makes this a true statement. So now I'm going to have you try one on your own. And I want you to pick any value for x. Find any value and then solve for y. And just to keep in mind, you can choose any value for x. You could choose any value for y and solve for the other. So choose x and find y. Pick any point you want or any value you want and solve for the other. So go ahead and try that. And if you really want to take it further, plot all of these points on a Cartesian coordinate graph and uh, see what you get. And maybe you'll understand why these are called linear equations. All right, so we're going to look at one last example, because sometimes when we're working with linear equations that maybe we want to plot a lot of points to actually see what the behavior is on a Cartesian coordinate graph, maybe we want to create a table of values. And we sometimes call that table of values a t-table, because if we look at how we divided it, it looks like a t. So we organize it for our ordered pairs that we want to eventually put on a Cartesian coordinate. We want to have our x's and our y's, our two variables in any linear equation. So if you notice, we have some values here. And I know that this value belongs to the y because it's in the column for the y of my t table. So if I want to find the x of the ordered pair that would be a point on my graph, I just need to plug this value in for the y value. So I'm going to take our equation x plus 2 times y which is 11 halves. So I just substitute it in. And that's going to equal 9. And now I can solve the equation. It has just one variable. So 2 times 11 halves is 11. I can subtract 11 from both sides. And I'll show that. And we get 9 minus 11 is a negative 2. Different signs, we find their difference. The larger value determines the sign. So x equals negative 2. Now I can take that value and put it in my table. So now, when I need to take a point and put it on the graph, I can say this is my ordered pair, negative 2, 11 halves, x, y. So we can write it as an ordered pair as well. What if we have negative 1 in the x? Well, that tells me I can substitute in the x value and do this problem all over again. Negative 1 for the x value plus 2 times y equals 9. So we have negative 1 plus 2y equals 9. Well, to solve for our variable, we're going to add 1 to both sides. And then we can divide both sides by 2, undoing our operation. So if I see multiplication, I undo it with division. Anything over itself is 1. So I get y equals 10 divided by 2 is 5. So y equals 5. And we can complete that ordered pair in our table. So if I wanted to write the ordered pair, this one would be negative 1, 5. x is negative 1 when y is 5. All right, so hopefully you kind of see the pattern. I want you, for practice, to complete this table. Plug in the y value to find the x. If you're given the x, plug it in to find the y. So go ahead and try this yourself. This has been section 6.1, Cartesian coordinate. Thank you for watching.